Hi everyone, Elizabeth here. So I just wanted to do this video just to kind of give a little bit of some thoughts or expressions so people can understand um, some things that I've experienced that are real life experiences over the last couple years of how I've seen health and wellness just drastically change. Um, I So I do sell vintage and antique items on Etsy. And so I'm constantly always going to estate sales and garage sales. And so I was just walking around my neighborhood on Friday and I saw a sign, which actually are these couple old ladies that I already know, they do garage sales all the time, but they were helping their friend move. And as I was in the garage, I was talking to the daughter and she uh, told me that at the end of April, a couple days after her father got the second poke, um, he, his blood pressure just drastically dropped and um, he was immediately admitted into the hospital. Basically transitioned from hospital to hospice and then died. Probably, uh, I think if I remember right, it was about probably about a month's time period. He did die at home. He got to have hospice. And so as I heard this, I was like, oh my God, because I'm dealing with a family member who's having a bad reaction to a mandatory flu vaccine because they work at a hospital. And between all of this, it's just been so much because I've just seen, it's like death is just wafting in the air and this massive decline. So in 2020, I saw a massive decline with the senior citizens that I worked with. Now, the, the home that I was at predominantly had most people were over 88 and 90 years old. Um, my oldest client, um, student or whatever, we played ping pong and she turned 100 this September in 2021. So I saw memory loss drastically increase. There was a lot of falls that happened just because they were constantly locked in and shut down and told that they weren't allowed to leave the facility. Although with independent living, you cannot legally tell people that. Um, so technically they could leave, but there was a lot of high encouragement to not leave the facility. Um, at the start of 2021, they got their shots in January. And I remember my my oldest lady, the 99 year old, not quite 100, just told me for like three weeks that she was not herself. Um, I have another guy who I played ping pong with who, who was already moved in um, at 68 years old for early stages of dementia and, or Alzheimer's. And he was like completely checked out. I remember just hitting a ball and he just stood there like this, kind of like a deer in headlights, like no reaction, no nothing. I saw another guy started to slur his words a couple weeks after that. Um, he eventually passed away, I think around, yeah, like the spring. So it probably was in between an eight and 12 week time period. Nobody would believe me that his slurring his words were just not normal. I knew something was neurologically wrong with him because my colleague understood that as well because he, he couldn't really move and function. He did lose a lot of abilities because of being more sedentary over the winter months. Um, yeah, and he I, I don't know the specific cause of his death, but I do know from what I understand, organ failure was a part of that. Um, I just saw one lady the one day a few times, she just, she's a stroke survivor. So she already, has, she has paralysis. So the amount of falls have increased. The amount of hospital visits have increased. The amount of ambulance visits to the building decrease, increased, excuse me, increased. So I kind of started seeing all of this. And then once they started having the booster shots, and on that same day, five people, four people tested positive on the PCR day. And then staff members and additional individuals tested positive after the booster shot. Um, one lady, three days after her booster shot, started coughing up blood. She was very sick, had fevers, chills. Her test came back negative, started coughing up blood, went to the hospital, tested positive got the mono, um, they also found out that she had fluid on her heart and she got the monoclonal 
treatment, antibody treatment. I don't know exactly how you pronounce that. Um, and then eventually as she came back, stuck in her room, she ended up developing colitis. I have a 32 year old client from India that started developing heart issues. That doesn't seem kind of normal for somebody at 32. The person has hypothyroid problems. Um, I've had probably about a 73 year old lady said she stopped coming to yoga for a while because she was very dizzy. Um, her dizziness also led to abnormal heart rhythms that was found on an, uh, her EKGs came back abnormal, let's just say not normal. And uh, they prescribed iron and she said that helped. Yoga actually started helping her again. She chose to get, to get the booster shot. Um, God, I'm trying to think now because I have so many experiences that I'm like, Jesus, it's just never ending. But now I'm kind of blanking out because I'm on spot and off camp. <laughs> and after, so just basically after I went to that estate sale, I cannot even tell you. I go to estate sales all the time. It's pretty much every weekend. I cannot tell you the amount of estate sales happening right now. I'm not saying all of them are dying. A lot of them are old enough to where they're moving into homes, but I've never in the five, last four or five years of really getting into estate sales, I've never seen this many, especially in the winter because moving time is normally spring and summer to where you see a crap ton in the summertime and then it kind of weans off around uh, this, this time period. So it was just all of this sadness and negative energy and thinking like, oh my God. And I've said this before on another video at MIT Tech, it's called the Jetson Protocol. These kind of machines are able to pick up your unique heartbeat. I think it was from 200 feet away. It said, picking up somebody's heartbeat was actually better than facial recognition. So if the government knows this, and if the tech world knows this, doesn't that prove that your heartbeat and your heart is very special, it's very sacred, and you are also an electromagnetic frequent being that has an aura and energy that radiates from your heart center and that love and that warmth can be felt from people. Maybe not so much when you're six feet away and your pie hole's plugged. So it's, when you understand that science and tech knows this, isn't it just so interesting that so many people are developing heart issues, fluid on the heart, abnormal heart rhythms, I mean, I, I can't even begin to explain the amount of shit that I've seen because I don't want to make this a 30 minute video. I don't understand why some people's bodies are reacting. <laughs> Sorry about that. My phone ran out of storage. So I don't really understand or know why certain people's bodies are reacting worse than others or having immediate damage. Um, I do know one of my clients, their mother is in town from India and obviously you have to have your V-card in order to get into the country and leave. And the mother's blood pressure dropped so bad, she ended up passing out and fainting in the kitchen and nobody thinks that's weird. I know people have pre-existing issues and injuries and you know, that lady in particular has had some episodes of seizures before, but we have to ask when we're constantly seeing an increase of hospital visits and or just issues start to arise in your health that you never had before, it's not a coincidence. I've, I've had very big disagreements with people when they're talking about protection. So for example, supposedly next year, England, is only allowing people to leave to go to other countries if you have had your third shot. So the definition of being fully veed is going to change time and time again. At what point do you put your foot down and say, I don't trust the, the government? Why, why is that so difficult? Why is it so difficult for people to think? Think about this. Today, October 25th, is the first day Seattle is not allowing unvaccinated people to go to gyms, recreation facilities, bars, and restaurants. 
and music venues and any large events. I got engaged. I can't get married in King County because every single person who enters a venue, so if I want to rent a venue for a wedding, they have to show their V card. It's literally insanity. It's not only insanity when people are now, you know, at their, their third stamp and they still have to wear a mask indoors and in public places. At what point do you not get it? It's not about protection. It's about control. Because if there was protection, you'd be able to go back and live in your normal life. The insanity of the shit that I've dealt with with my family in terms of immunizations being expired, they, you know, had to get shot with tetanus and then with flu shot. And then they want people to get this new thing. I'm trying not to use the word because of the algorithms of the voice recognition, but it's getting nuts. It's gone too far. You have people in a county called Jefferson County. I actually don't know what state it's in, but I saw a news report that 16 year old kids got vaxxed without parent consent and the form has to be signed and authorized by a guardian or the parent. So this little vax mobile just drove up to the school and started shooting kids up without their parents consent. It's like the wild west is alive. People are do the wild west was people just did whatever they wanted. They wanted to get drunk and shoot people and rob things and be the sheriff of the town or whatever. That's what's happening today. It's the same thing. History is repeating itself. The same thing, different characters, different situations. It's the same matrix of crap. So I'm no one special. You know, I've been doing this for years. I'm still talking to the air, I feel like. But I wanted to share this because these are real life situations. Like if you want to get to know people's secrets, <laughs> become friends with massage therapists, personal trainers, and estheticians because people tell you everything. You know, a personal trainer for some people is just somebody who exercises. For other people, it's more of like being a counselor and a lifestyle manager and just being that um, kind of soundboard for these people to kind of vent or go through. When people bash the natural world, like I'm learning how to grow my own food, this is just a piece of romaine lettuce and you stick it in a little bit of water and look how much it's grown. It's growing new leaves. I could pick this off and eat it right now. I'm gonna plant to this, but it's like life has a way. This is the natural world. Why are we messing with it? Well, we know why because of corruption control and politics and Freemasonry and, and global, unity and all this stuff. So people who are aware understand, but I do think it's really important because the, the sad part is with all of these boomers and the greatest generation that I've seen, because some of these people have been born in the 1920s. I mean, it kind of is just putting them to decline or into their deathbed a little bit quicker for a lot of them. I mean, God, one lady, God, she fell. And then she fell again, so she busted her ankle. And then she fell again weeks later and busted her arm. And, it, and it's like nobody can put two and two together. So some something's going on either neurologically or from the nervous system or from a strength perspective. Um, so this decline and this fear and just shoving people in their room and having everybody freaked out and paranoid, it's like, of course these things are gonna happen. I just find it really interesting that the week we got booster shots, about 12 to 15 people ended up testing positive and they think it's just the virus. Meanwhile, I lose my job because I got a nasal swab every shift and wore an N95 mask and kept my distance and apparently that's not an accommodation. So I've done this every day since March of 2020, not every day, every week since March of 2020, hasn't been a problem. I have not had one positive test, not even a false negative, false positive. But I digress. So yeah, I wanted to share this because this is this is real. You know, 
that saying, like, what is it, the five degrees or seven degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon, how some actor is always somehow connected to Kevin Bacon. I feel like this is like the seven degrees or five degrees, whatever that saying is of death, because it's in the backyard now. It's, it's not only people we know and loved ones and friends and neighbor, but it's just people in your own neighborhood and it's going to affect the old population. It's kind of, it's just it's it's horrible I don't even I don't even want to think about it because with for as somebody who sells vintage and antique items I mean we we are losing the last bit of the generation that was surrounded by beauty more or less let's put it that way like people in retirement homes have money these ones do the lower grade ones obviously are different but you may hate classical music, but a lot of these people were brought up with classical music, and that is a different sort of frequency and energy than all of the pop crap and rap and all that stuff that we see today that's just promoting garbage and is a lot of like head banging music that frazzles the brain. It's a different energy. We are also losing the last bit of the generation of women who are actually creators, I mean, of the home, but they were doing needlepoints, you know, they were hand making linens, doing cross stitch, uh, whatever, making costumes for their kids. They, they actually, yeah, they had the opportunities to be creators. Now we're creators today in our own business and little apps and things like that in our fitness videos, but it's, it's still, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit different because that's more material. Material, I guess what they made was material too, but it was kind of for the for the family unit and for the home. Um, yeah, it's just sad. It's just sad to see all that skill kind of go because they were just some of the last ones with really that head, heart, and hand connection of making things, making the wooden tables. Now we just have mass factory produced um, IKEA furniture and just cheap polyester kitchen towels, you know, it, it just makes you think a little bit. So I just wanted to share this because this is, I don't think I'm anybody. I'm just a person living, you know, like anybody else. I, I don't really want to be, after all of this crap, after being famous and all of that, uh, just seeing what happens and, and whatever. Anyways, I'll just go there. So I want you to know that I mean, you probably know this, that everyday people are getting harmed and injured or dying, but it is a lot closer than what you think. And if, you know, if your family and friends and loved ones have it, I mean, I hope they got the flu, the flu one and not the other ones that have like heavy loaded batches, but just keep praying for them and um, keep them moving, really adopting a detox diet. These are all the other videos beets are going to be really important because beets have a nutrient in it that cleanses every single cell of the body and cleanses the liver so you want to get all these toxins out um thank you for listening <laughs> i have like a laundry list of different videos to do but i i just wanted to kind of piggyback this upon the last one that i did because it's important to know that the lifestyle choices that we've made through being predominantly isolated and sedentary has affected people. It affects people more. The geriatric body declines super fast, especially after the age of 85. And, um, and then I've seen it. I've seen it in my own backyard, uh, my own retirement home. One woman tested positive and then she woke up at two in the morning and slipped and fell in the bathroom, hit her head really hard. She went to the hospital that morning at like say five or six a.m and never came back and died so what did she die from the fall or from covid i don't know i'm sure the death certificate will say one thing but yeah anyways thank you for liking sharing and subscribing and hope to see you soon Bye bye
A mom from Kenner may soon be squaring up in court against Jefferson Parish Public Schools for what happened at East Jefferson High on Wednesday. Jennifer Ravane says her 16-year-old son received the COVID-19 vaccine without her consent when an Auctioner Mobile vaccination clinic rolled in and allowed him to sign the consent form himself underage. An attorney for Ravane called the situation a nightmare and claims other underage students got the shot too. Writing to Eyewitness News, quote, the egregious and reckless actions of Auctioner and East Jefferson High School went well beyond any legal and moral bounds and at a minimum constitute a battery upon the minor child. The attorney says he's exploring every avenue to hold Auctioner and the district accountable. As outlined by the Louisiana Department of Health, a parent signature is required for anyone under 18 who wants the shot. Auctioner Health System apologized for the misstep at East Jeff and says it's revising its school vaccination program, writing, quote, We have procedures in place to ensure that all policies are followed. However, in this instance, this did not occur. We have taken immediate action to review our on-site vaccination policies and to ensure that these policies will be strictly enforced moving forward. Jefferson Parish Public Schools did not respond to multiple requests to answer questions or comment, but may soon have to answer to Ravane's attorney. Devin Bartolotta, Eyewitness News.